We all want local government and the NHS to work closely together, but the problem is that local government funding has been cut, 400,000 fewer people are receiving publicly funded social care as a result of that, the NHS is having difficulty coping with the crisis they're in, therefore there is, unfortunately, bed blocking where acute patients cannot leave because there's no social care available for them somewhere down the line. The issue is the funding crisis in the NHS and in local government. The published figures by the NHS Trust show that the total deficit is £2.45 billion, but the Chief Executive sh says this figure may even be bigger. The Government disguises the extent of the crisis through temporary bailouts, and next month the... Um well, they are, they are bailing out trusts in a crisis. That, of course, is a good thing, but why are they in a crisis in the first place? Next, 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 month, uh, next month, Mr Speaker, sustainability and transformation plans are going to be published. Many all over the country are quite alarmed by this because of the threat to accident and emergency departments. Can the Prime Minister deal with this issue now by quite simply saying there will be no downgrades and no closures of A&E departments in this statement coming out next month? I say to the right honourable gentleman, over the course of this Parliament, the Government will be spending over half a trillion pounds on the National Health Service. That is a record level of investment in our National Health Service. But there is, there is a key difference between the way that he approaches this and the way that I approach it. We believe on this side of the House that at local level people should be able to make decisions about the National Health Service, that decisions about the National Health Service should be led by clinicians, that it shouldn't be a top-down approach which is typical of the Labour Party. Wow. Wow, Mr Speaker. Well, top down is what we got. And it cost £3 billion for a, re a reorganisation that nobody wanted at all. Mr Speaker, I started by asking the Prime Minister about parity of esteem. All this government's produced is parity of failure. Failing mental health patients, failing elderly people who need social care, failing the four million on the NHS waiting list, failing five times as many people waiting more than four hours at A&E departments, and another winter crisis is looming.